Welcome back guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to enable AMD's FSR3 frame generation in games on ROG Ally for absolutely free using DLSS enabler program. You can follow the steps shown in this video on any Windows PC that has an Intel or AMD based GPU. This program even works on RTX based GPUs. There's only a small difference in installation instructions for RTX GPUs. I've already shown the process in my previous video. I'll drop its link in the description. DLSS enabler is basically a compilation of multiple mods. It installs and configures the mods automatically for us. For the purpose of enabling FSR frame generation, it uses Nukem 9's DLSS G2 FSR3 mod which replaces DLSS frame generation with FSR frame generation. Originally, Nukem 9's mod works only on RTX based GPUs. It also requires hardware accelerated GPU scheduling to be enabled. ROG Ally comes with AMD's Radeon 780M GPU. It does not meet the requirements. DLSS enabler bypasses these requirements by using NVIDIA GPU spoofers. It also includes OptiScaler mod previously known as Cyber XCSS mod. It allows us to replace DLSS subscaler with XCSS or FSR upscaler. This is useful for people who don't own RTX based GPUs as DLSS is limited to them. You can download DLSS enabler from Nexus Mods website. I'll give its link in the description of the video. A note for AMD and Intel GPU owners, you are required to select the AMD Intel support package option during the installation process. After finishing the installation, please use the registry file delivered by the installer and disable NVIDIA signature checks. These steps are not required for NVIDIA GPUs. Features tested across multiple DirectX 12 games on Intel, AMD and NVIDIA, GTX and RTX cards. Wide compatibility including AMD GCN 1 to 5 GPUs, RDNA 1 to 3 GPUs. Ally has an RDNA 3 based GPU, Intel Arc GPUs, NVIDIA GTX and RTX GPUs, replace DLSS subscaler with XCSS or FSR2, replace DLSS frame generation with FSR3 frame generation using Nukem 9's mod, compatible with both Windows 10 and 11, even Linux is supported, that's really good to see. For most of the games, FSR frame generation should work out of the box after installing DLSS enabler. You just need to install it in the games install directory where the game's exe file is present. For a few games, some extra steps will be required. Arta is the author of DLSS enabler. They have even provided the list of games that are compatible with it. In this video, I'll be trying out Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts Legacy and Alan Wake Part 2. To open the complete list, just click on many others here. There you go. Name of the GPUs. Yeah, it's a big list. Notes. Instructions for getting the games working with DLSS enabler. Credit goes to the following people for helping Arta to develop DLSS enabler. Nukem9 for providing DLSS G2 FSR3 mod. Nitec for providing OptiScaler mod. It allows us to replace DLSS with FSR or XCSS. Fake Mikau for providing NV API dummy. NVIDIA GPU spoofer, DirectX 12 proxy provided by Nitec, and many thanks to the community of DLSS 2 FSR Discord. In order to download DLSS enabler, just scroll all the way up to the top, click on file here, then click on manual download under the latest version. Need to have a free Nexus Mods account in order to download any stuff from here, click on download, click on slow download. Open File Explorer, go to Downloads, there is the exe file that I just downloaded. First I will be showing you how to install DLSS enabler in Hogwarts Legacy. I own the Steam version of the game. Just select the game in your Steam library. Right click Manage, Browse Local Files, it will open the games install directory. I will show you way to install DLSS enabler. Open Phoenix folder, open Bind this folder, open Win64 folder. This is the directory where you need to install DLSS enabler in order to get it working in Hogwarts Legacy. Just copy its directory, games.exe file, now run DLSS enabler installer, click on I accept the agreement, next, next, you need to specify the directory where DLSS enabler will be installed, and just select the directory, right click paste, Hogwarts Legacy. Next, I will be installing universal DLL version of Nukem 9's mod. First option selected. Since my ROG Ally has an AMD based GPU, I will check this setting. Enable support for AMD and Intel GPUs. Don't install if you have an NVIDIA based GPU. That's it. Next, install. The setup process is that simple. Check this box. Finish. 
Now go back to the games install directory where you install DLSS enabler. You can see so many mod files. If you want to remove the mods installed by DLSS enabler, just execute its uninstaller. There it is. There's the XCSS DLL file. Its version is 1.3. I'll execute this registry file, disable NVIDIA signature checks. Only need to do it once. Don't need to execute this file again when you install DLSS enabler for any other game. If you want to revert the change, just execute this registry file, restore NVIDIA signature checks. By default, DLSS enabler uses XCSS upscaler for DirectX 12 games running on Intel or AMD based GPUs. You can change this by editing the nvngx.ini file, open it. First we have frame generation argument, it is set to auto by default which uses FSR3 frame generation. If you have an RTS 40 series GPU, you can use DLSS frame generation by replacing auto with DLSSG. Override reflex mode, configured by the game, set to on by default. Then we have a frame rate limiter, it's set to off by default, you can set the FPS limit here. Experimental feature, just leave it to auto. Upscalers for DirectX 12 games, XCSS upscaler is used by default. If you have an RTX based GPU, just replace auto with DLSS. Both FSR 2.1 and FSR 2.2 are supported, would not recommend them over XCSS. The additional upscalers even work with Vulkan games. I'll just use the default settings, not tweak anything from here. Myla is running on BIOS version 3.3.7. I've installed AMD's technical PV GPU driver at Tunnel Edition 24.5.1. For Hogwarts Legacy, I've set the UMA buffer size to Auto. Using the 25 watts manual profile, all three power values set at 25 watts. 720p resolution, CPU boost disabled. Connected my Cosmic Byte Stellaris Gamepad to Ally via Bluetooth mode. Launch the game. Shaders are getting compiled. Show you internal in settings. Using a custom afterburner overlay to show you the performance metrics. Enable free sync and vsync. Anti lag setting enabled. And that's it. In game settings 720p resolution. You can see we have access to NVIDIA DLSS. XCSS upscaler will be used. DLSS cannot be used on non RTX based GPUs. I'm using its quality preset. Frame generation enabled. Reflex low latency setting enabled. I've disabled motion blur from here. In game also disabled. Go to medium settings entirely up to you. I want the base FPS to be as high as possible, like 50 to 60. Better results with frame generation enabled. I load Hogsmeade area. Forgot to set up scaling sharpness to nil can cause the game to crash. There's a character standing at the entrance of Hogsmeade. Check out the input response. Games HUD is not flickering. I'll keep the gameplay short, already tested the game with FSR frame generation. Back then I used Duke FC's mod, it's a paid mod. DLSS enabler is absolutely free, using Nukem 9's mod. FPS is around 100, this is amazing. This game is very demanding. Consumes a lot of RAM. Sprinting around. Subtitles are not flickering. Smooth experience. Not observing any artifacts around the character model. I'll be installing it in Cyberpunk 2077, I own the Steam version. Select the game in your Steam library, right click, manage, browse local files. This is the games install directory, open bin folder, open x64 folder, this is where you need to install DLSS enabler, so copy the directory from here. Run DLSS enabler installer, I accept next, next, paste the directory here, next. Check this setting as well. Again, I'll be using universal DLL version of Nukem 9 mod. Next, install. Here you go. We are ready to run the game. For this game, I'll set the UMA buffer size setting to 6 GB. Need to restart Ally. Games launcher. Play. Adrenaline settings for the game. 
FreeSync and VSync enable and the light setting enable that's it in game graphics setting and just change the upscaler from FSR 2.1 to DLSS quality preset sharpness level set to 0 0.1 texture quality set to medium first I'll run the game without DLSS frame generation low to medium settings these effects disable especially motion blur and that's it apply video settings 720p resolution we sync disable from here we are in I am standing right outside V's apartment building night city it's the daytime FPS is around 55 I'll just enable frame generation now graphics frame generation on apply serve the FPS counter the FPS increase up to 105 can also have the added amount of smoothness wow camera animation is so smooth now as if the camera is floating engage in combat in this game frame generation related artifacts are produced when we drive vehicles at high speeds these artifacts can be fixed using some mods I have already shown the process in another video I will drop its link in the description I will just show you these artifacts let me gain some speed here you can clearly see the flickering of textures going on on the bottom edge of the display just use the additional mods in order to fix this issue now I'll be installing DLSS enabler in Alan Wake Part 2, very demanding title, Epic Games version. Click on the three dots below its box art. Manage, click on the folder. This is the games install directory, copy it. Game.cxe file. Run DLSS enabler installer. I accept. Paste the games directory here. Next. Again, I'll be using Universal DLL version of Nukem 9's mod. Check this setting. Enable support for AMD and Intel GPUs. Next, install. That's it. Uncheck. Finish. For Alan Wake Part 2, you need to disable one setting in order to eliminate frame generation related artifacts. Just open C drive, then open users folder. Here, open the folder that has the name of your PC's username. Then click on view. Show check hidden items then open app data folder open local folder here look for remedy folder there it is open Alan Wake 2 folder open render.inf file using any text editor here look for m lens distortion by default it's set to true and just change it to false click on file click on save close the file that's it even for this game, I have set the UMA buffer size to 6 GB. Launch the game. Adrenaline settings for the game. Free sync and B sync enable. Anti lag setting enable. That's it. Graphics settings. We have the option for enabling DLSS. I'll uncheck DLSS frame generation for the time being. Or run the game without it. These are the settings that I am using. Motion blur frame game disabled. Low to medium settings. Ray tracing disabled, of course. There's Alan. I'm in the dark place. Here, FPS is around 35 to 40. You can observe the sluggishness. Oh my god. Shadow attacked me. I'll just enable frame generation now. Dark in here. Frame generation on. DLSS quality preset back to the game yeah I can observe the added amount of smoothness frame pacing graph here is not accurate big improvement in terms of performance games interface is not flickering this engage in combat and these shadows are hostile
can hear them calling me. There you go. Oh my god. <laughs> Too many of them. 60 to 70 FPS. That's it with the video guys. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.